Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Wednesday, September 14th, 2022, and today we are going to be talking about Lindsey Graham's new abortion bill that would effectively ban abortions nationwide should it pass the United States House and United States Senate after 15 weeks of conception of the baby. Now, this is a very, very big move by the National Republican Party, regardless if they were in on it or not. Lindsey Graham represents a significant portion of the Republican Party, and by making such a move, has made severe electoral miscalculations as to how the public is going to respond to this. Lindsey Graham's decision to introduce this bill has effectively given the Democratic Party many pieces of campaign material to use against the Republicans just 55 days until the midterm elections. This decision is a very bad decision, I should say, electorally speaking, politically speaking. Everybody should know that this is not the move you make, especially knowing where the public stands on this issue, and yet Lindsey Graham decided to do it. This also is something that really has national implications well beyond just simply elections. Should the Republican Party win back control of the House and the United States Senate, it isn't entirely out of the question that they do try to propose such a bill, yet again, if they reclaim both chambers. Now, realistically speaking, it would never pass with the current filibuster, but technically speaking, the Republican Party has had opportunities in the past to go around the filibuster, as have Democrats, and there is a possibility that they try to amend the rules for their own purpose. There's nothing stopping them from that provision, except for President Biden's veto, which would be the next line of defense. But this is the first of many bills that we will likely see pop up on the national level, whether in the House or in the Senate, to ban abortion nationwide to 15 weeks or potentially even earlier. Now, the problem with this bill is not that it is going to pass, but simply as of right now, that it is a warning sign to women across the nation that this is something that Republicans are considering. And it's a warning sign that is going to resonate very effectively, considering the Democratic Party's recent strategy. Now, the Republican Party has been trying so, so tirelessly to break away from their previous stances on abortion. Many of the congressional representatives that are running in swing districts, many of the swing district Republican nominees, have changed their stances on abortion over the past month alone, some of them completely taking it off their website entirely. It's also on the Senate level in which you find that some Republicans like Blake Masters are shifting their stances on abortion, publicly saying that they were never 100% pro-life despite maybe two months ago campaigning on exactly that. The Republican Party is quite frankly experiencing a wake-up call, realizing that anti-abortion stances are not ones that are positive for the nation. They are not ones that the majority of the public aligns with. This wake-up call started all with Kansas. When the Dobbs decision released, immediately, Kansas had an abortion referendum set to the ballot in August. It was an abortion referendum that was supposed to show the nation that red states are pro-life and will vote that way given the opportunity. It was in many ways the GOP's way of showing that the states should decide, and I say this with air quotes because they no longer believe in such a case, at least to the extent Lizzie Graham doesn't and many other representatives and senators that have signed on to this bill or supported it directly or indirectly. But the point is that what Kansas showed was that when the states decide, even Republican states, they are not pro-life. And honestly, I could have told you this. Knowing where the American public stands on the issue of abortion, 61% of this country is pro-choice. And it's not just in the blue uh, you know, areas across this country, it's red states. It's red states like Kansas that voted for Trump by 15 points, but voted down an amendment that would ban abortion across the state by 18 points statewide. Effectively over a 30-point swing from the Republican nominee Donald Trump to the Democrat position of being pro-choice. It isn't just Kansas. This wake-up call also came out of Alaska, a state that is vehemently pro-choice. When you take a look at election data, polling data, etc., Alaska is by no means a pro-life state. And given the opportunity to vote in a special election following the Dobbs decision, they elected a Democrat. It isn't just here. It's Nebraska's first. It's Minnesota's first. It's New York's 19th. It's New York's 23rd. All around, it's multiple pieces to this puzzle that say, hey, the GOP cannot stand nationally against abortion, and electoral candidates in swing districts and swing states cannot either. And all of that just got thrown out because of Lindsey Graham's decision. Because already, this was introduced 25 hours ago. I meant to make a video on it yesterday. Uh, I did not get the time last evening, 
But the point was that this was breaking news and it very much is still breaking news. A lot of people don't know that this is happening yet. And the key word there is yet. Because the Democratic Party has immediately moved to using this in national strategy today on Twitter, today on social media, today on their own websites, on the DCCC, which is the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, the DSCC, the Democrat Senate uh, Senatorial Campaign Committee. I mean, these are groups that are focused by and for Democrats to elect Democrats, and they are already capitalizing on Lindsey Graham's inability to read the room. This is not going anywhere. No chance in hell this bill passes in our current Congress. So why introduce it? Well, when I saw that this was actually coming out, part of me thought that Lindsey Graham was some type of Democratic plant hoping to help them for the midterm elections. Maybe he felt guilty about confirming Amy Coney Barrett. Maybe it was something of that sort, but obviously that's a stretch. Realistically speaking, I just think some Republicans in the United States Senate have no idea of what it means to be politically calculated. And Lindsey Graham might be one of them. Because for the same person who back in the time in which he said, use my words against me, if I was to vote for Amy Coney Barrett and then decided to do it, this is someone who also completely campaigned against President Trump, went against him, vilified him, and now is his number one supporter. And the thing is, people recognize this. But it also means that he doesn't exactly have the best political skills when it comes down to understanding where the general populace is. I guarantee you if Lindsey Graham was in a swing state, he would not win re-election any election year. I think this decision from Lindsey Graham is a completely wrong one. And when you take a look at the pushback on Lindsey Graham, guess what? It's not positive. It's not positive from Democrats, but it's also not positive from Republicans. Mitch McConnell publicly saying that Lindsey Graham acted alone on this. John Cornyn, a senator from Texas, a state with an abortion ban, did not sign on to this. Shelley Moore Capito from West Virginia, one of the most conservative states in the entire nation. President Trump won there by 40 points in 2020 and 2016. And yet she does not sign on to this national abortion ban. It stunned the Republican Party because they already know they're behind. They're behind because the majority of the nation is not on their side. And they have been trying so tirelessly to walk back their positions, to hide their stances, nationally speaking. And for a significant you know, month now, they have been doing it, not necessarily effectively, but without major criticism. Because nothing like this was ever expected to happen nationwide. This just gave the Democratic Party the next two months worth of campaign efforts and attack ads. They have effectively been able, and not by their own accord, but able to now associate any and every Republican who's running for Senate or House to this nationwide abortion ban bill. And I'm telling you now, it's not going to work out. Because the nation is one way. We've already seen it in elections since the Dobbs decision that the American public does not align on this case. And one thing that is also quite interesting, you look at the generic ballot before Dobbs, Republicans were doing well. And then, as a lagging indicator sort of implies in its name, started to get narrower and narrower over about a month and two months. And now the Democrats lead by 1.2% nationwide. For the first time in nine consecutive months, the Democratic Party has now held strong for one month. The only reason why this happened, largely, or actually, no, I, I stand by it. The only reason that this happened is because Dobbs happened, because the Supreme Court attacked an issue that the majority of the country stands in one direction, away from the Republican Party. Even now, we are seeing opinion pieces from the Washington Post saying that this was a gift to the Democratic Party. And it 1,000% was. If Senate Democrats didn't have a way to associate their Senate Republican counterparts to a nationwide abortion ban, they absolutely do now. Because having it in the Senate is very different than the threat of it being in the Senate. Because what it has shown also with Lindsey Graham's words, that if they reclaim both chambers, there absolutely will be a vote on it. That is going to play tirelessly through many of these swing states. And the Democratic Party, quite frankly, should be happy that Lindsey Graham revealed his hand way, way too early. Because this was not a politically smart move. And that's why I'm questioning why it even happened. This is probably one of the worst PR disasters to happen for the Republican Party in this midterm cycle. And it happened yesterday. 
this is going to contribute to the downfall of many Senate Republicans as if maybe, you know, not to say that this was going to single handedly sink their campaigns. I think many of them are not going to win already. Blake Masters, you know, uh, et cetera. There's a whole group of them that we talk about time and time again. But many of them who have been trying again to distance themselves from the pro-life agenda because swing states, quite frankly, are pro-choice. Democratic states are pro-choice. And as some Republican states have shown, they are also pro-choice. Just also something to think about, you know, when it comes down to the issue of abortion, this isn't the most important issue because, quite frankly, inflation is more important to the American voter. Inflation does matter. But if it was just inflation, the Republican Party would be in a position as to where they were a few months ago when they were leading in the Senate. They were leading in the House by enormous margins, and they were leading in the generic ballot in some cases by three points and in some cases by four points nationwide. You know, the leads of the Republican Party at different points, one time five points nationwide. This was a significantly high point for the GOP. But it was before the Dobbs decision. It was before the decision that completely changed the trajectory of these races. But to see, let's say, abortion was the number one issue, and everyone was voting on that case, 61 to 37, the last time we saw a House election with that type of lopsided popular vote was in 1974, when the Democratic Party won 58% of the popular vote to the Dem Republican Party's 41%. And even then, it's not as extreme as the stance on abortion. And the Democrats won 291 seats to the Republican Party's 144. So the Republican Party should be grateful that Biden is president right now. They should be grateful that inflation is increasing. They should be grateful that for economic indicators, an indicator and an issue that the Republican Party routinely wins over swing voters is a prominent one on this ballot. But on the other hand, Democrats should be happy about this. Not happy that there's a possibility that millions of women lose their right to choose, but happy that this decision from Lindsey Graham could preempt that. Happy that there is now concrete evidence, rather than just words that came from the mouths of Kevin McCarthy or Mitch McConnell, there is now concrete evidence that Republicans plan to do what they said they were going to do if they reclaim the majority, and now we have it in writing. Now we have it potentially going to the Senate floor. And once it does that, already, I mean, already it has effectively been a good piece of messaging for the Democratic Party and will continue to be so for the next 55 days. But at that point in time, it will be significantly worse for the GOP. There are very few moments in time in which I think that the trajectory of our nation is on track to change. One of them was the Kansas abortion referendum. Another one was the Alaska special election. The main one of this year was the overturning of the Dobbs decision and the leak. The leak, possibly, the Republicans on the Supreme Court, the conservatives, sorry, not the Republicans, but, you know, essentially one and the same, the conservatives on the Supreme Court appointed by Republican presidents all seem to be pro-life. But in their, you know, statements before they were chosen for the Supreme Court or confirmed in there, they said that they were not going to seek the overturning of it. Then the leak came. But there was still a possibility that they changed their mind. Maybe, you know, Brett Kavanaugh and Amy Coney Barrett were going to realize that there were going to be severe electoral implications for this. But it didn't seem as if that's what their purpose was. I mean, they're on the Supreme Court. They're not listening to really many outsiders to the extent that is super important. So to see that, you know, you have Supreme Court justices ruling in one way, potentially or not, at that point, it didn't really matter much. But when the decision actually came out, that's when we knew. The culture on politics for the midterms has changed. No matter what way you look at it, the numbers in key Senate races, key House races, and on the nationwide level have changed tremendously. Had Roe v. Wade not been overturned, Alaska would not have gone blue. Had Roe v. Wade not been overturned, if Kansas was to vote on it, I do think that this margin would be narrower. Because also I will say that voters never over the past 50 years, have had to vote for a candidate with the understanding that their stance on abortion was binding. Because Roe v. Wade had always been in law. Roe v. Wade had been tried and tested by many before the new Supreme Court, and it had succeeded as precedent. People knew that Roe v. Wade was there. When Donald Trump got on the debate stage and said, yes, I would appoint justices that would potentially overturn Roe v. Wade, people didn't think it was serious. Abortion was not an important issue in the 2016 election. But I can guarantee you, if abortion was overturned before the 2016 election, Hillary Clinton would have won. And I say that not to say that this would have been, you know, a single-handed issue, but I think a lot of the rhetoric would have changed around abortion and around those elections 
rather than focusing on continuing the Obama legacy, rather than focusing on, you know, the, uh, or the emails or the Benghazi scandal, whatever it might be, it would shift to abortion. And Trump would have to walk the fine line of being pro-life while also understanding that the majority of the country is not. And that's the fine line that, unfortunately for the GOP, there is no unified front. And because there is no unified front to keep it quiet, to not be vehemently pro-life, because some Republicans are already trying to do that on their own, because there is not one central candidate, Lindsey Graham and other Senate Republicans and other Senate and House Republicans are likely going to follow suit in this case and introduce bills that will ban abortion nationwide. Because even if it isn't beneficial for swing state Republicans, uh, swing district Republicans, they aren't coming from swing states. They aren't coming from swing districts. So whatever they say, they will be safe for potentially the rest of their lives. Their colleagues, on the other hand, not so much. I think that should really come before any type of opportunism on the sense of Lindsey Graham. But I do think that there is a very good possibility here that Lindsey Graham's decision to do this is going to increase the Democratic Party's vote share this November. There are very few things that I think individual events will have severe implications and ramifications for either political party. But I think in this case, this is one of them. And we've only just started to see it begin in terms of strategy and messaging across the country. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2022 Senate election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all later today.